Welcome everyone. We are today talking to Shelby Salenkamp. Did I say that right? Salenkamp. Excellent. And you're a, a dietitian, registered dietitian nutritionist, yes. and your business is, I'm going to hope I get this correct, Kokuha, Kokua? Kokua, mm -hmm. Lifestyle and Nutrition. So welcome. Thanks thank for coming you. on. Yes, thank you for having me. So why don't you tell everybody uh, just as like what your business, what you do, and where you're located? Certainly. So yes, like you mentioned, I'm a, a registered dietitian nutritionist. Um, I am the owner and main dietitian for Cocoa Lifestyle and Nutrition. And what I do is I see clients currently in telehealth and in person at my office in Clearview. Um, so just south of 180th on Highway 9. And I see anyone looking to answer questions uh, about diet and nutrition or lifestyle modifications that they can make to help improve symptoms of a chronic or acute illness. So what would be some of the, the chronic or even just symptomatic things that someone would come with that you could help them sort out? So I see mainly people with digestive concerns. Um, that is my area of specialty, uh, digestive concerns and mental health concerns. Um, but I see anyone with autoimmune conditions such as lupus or fibromyalgia. I see, like I mentioned, digestive concerns, people anywhere from you know, just diarrhea, constipation, someone who's been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, mm -hmm. um, someone who thinks they may have SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth, um, often associated with IBS. Um, I've also seen people with IBD or inflammatory bowel disease, which is Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Um, and I've seen people for uh, help going through cancer treatment, um, I've helped guide people through keto for cancer. Um, so there's a myriad of different uh, chronic illnesses and concerns that people can come see me for, as well as ones that you may think of like diabetes, weight loss, heart disease, um, even liver and kidney disease. Um, yeah, I see, I see people with all So if someone wanted to contact, I'm assuming your website is quite extensive and it's very lovely. I have to say oh, it was you. very pleasing to look through. Thank you. So your contact, I'm assuming in the moment with COVID, it's via email, telephone, yes. and something of this nature. Okay. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what what's the intake then for someone wanting to go ahead and have a uh, a session? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I guess you'd have to explain that to me. Yeah. So um, they can make an appointment for a sixty to seventy-five minute appointment. Those appointments can be made right on my website. There's a link directly to make um, an appointment. They can email me shelbyarenrdn at gmail .com, or they can call me. Um, any of those ways is perfectly fine with me. A lot of people choose to reach out by email first. Um, to see if their condition or, or whatever their concern is, is something that I might be able to help them with. And I'm very happy to answer questions over email. Um, definitely phone or email right now is the preferred you know, first contact rather than stopping by the office. Um, and then, yeah, we, we tend to make that 60 to 75 minute appointment. And it can either be person at the office or telehealth. I'm doing both right now. Excellent. So one of the things that you mentioned in what you can help people with is the keto for cancer. Could you expand on that a little? Yeah, so I've recently had a few uh, patients diagnosed with various forms of cancer who have been recommended to change their diet to um, a ketogenic diet. As more and more research comes out about how eating keto um, may help sort of modulate or change their cancer treatment or be a treatment for cancer itself. Um, a lot of people are choosing to go alternative 
medicine routes for treating their cancer, especially if it's a recurrence. Um, so what we do is work with their physician. Oftentimes it's a naturopath. Uh, we work with their physician, their oncologist, and you know, sort of come up with this plan, come up with goals to set um, to get into ketosis. And we just start on that journey. And um, I, I definitely think for people out there who are thinking, oh, I want to go keto on my own. Um, it's a lot harder than people think to actually get ask, into keto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask you to just briefly explain what that kind of looks like, because I, I'm going to guess there are people out there that don't know what it is. Yeah, so ketosis is when our body switches from using glucose as an energy source to using ketone as an energy source. And this happens when we switch from carbohydrates, so the starches, you know, potatoes, oh. bread, wheat, all of those things. We switch from that to using fat as our fuel. So we start to metabolize all sorts of fats, including fat stored on our body. Um, to create these ketone bodies that then become the fuel for our cells rather than glucose. So it involves eating very few carbohydrates um, and a lot of fat. So it's about an 80% fat diet. Um, and when you think about how fat is usually packaged, it is packaged with a protein or with a carbohydrate. Right? So all of those fats that are packaged with a carbohydrate are also so you tend to have a very small amount, a uh, small variety of foods that you can eat. Um, but it can be a very effective treatment for certain um, conditions such as epilepsy. We're learning much more about cancer. There's a, a select few others that we know about, um, but it is very difficult to do on your own and definitely not recommended for everyone. So when we talk about fats in diet, the general perception is, oh my God, too much fat. But there is a difference between the types of fat. Absolutely the, right. You know, the obvious fats, the oils you cook with, or can you kind of speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So back in the 70s and 80s, this low fat sort of fad broke out. There was a bunch of research being done on dietary fats and how fat made us fat. Um, we know now that that is not the whole story. Um, calories are what adds to our weight and what adds to the fat stores on our body. So where these calories come from doesn't always matter. So oh. fat versus carbohydrate doesn't always matter. In fact, it, defend, it depends quite a bit on the person that you're talking about and how their individual body metabolizes the fats and the carbohydrates. Um, and so, so that's where you come in, in being, you know, the problem solver and figuring out what does and doesn't work for their body. That's exactly right. It involves a lot of sort of, you know, detective work. I think of myself and the client or patient um, sort of coming together, collaborating and really sort of delving into what the, the basis of their issue is, what the root cause is, that's what we really need to get down. Um, not just covering up the symptoms and then figure out for their body what makes the most sense. Um, and so for some people that's a high carbohydrate, low fat diet. For some people that's a very high protein diet. For some people that's a very high fat diet. So it really all depends on the person. Um, and it's a lot of trial and error, and we spend quite a bit of time doing it. But in the end, I think um, very worthwhile. Well, that's a fabulous resource because most people, first thing they do is they Google something and they start doing it, and then they don't feel good. Exactly. And they don't understand why. Exactly. So with this detective work, tell me, because in my line of work, I often are um, up against layered things that are happening for a person. Yeah. So for you, tell me how significant stress is an undercurrent to how their digestive tract and and or if they've been 
diagnosed with something pretty chronic yeah. works. Yeah, so you, you've hit the nail right on the head there. Um, stress is usually one of the first things that we talk about at these appointments. It can be, you know, acute stress or stress that you're feeling right now, or it can be stress that you've been carrying for years. And often, you know, it's, it's not always my job to get to the root of that stress in terms of a psychological manner, but to get to the root of how can we lift that stress um, in the context of digestion especially, but, you know, lifting that anxiety around food and around feeling safe, that a lot of it comes back to safety. So we talk about how to ground ourselves before we take that first bite of food because digestion starts before you ever put anything in your mouth. So we need to start with a calming atmosphere. Um, we do a lot of breathing exercises. We talk a lot about the eating environment itself and how that can either promote stress or reduce stress. All of those things um, feed into how our digestive system works. And we know that um, you know, the gut is being called the second brain. 80% um, of our serotonin, which is a, a very powerful neurotransmitter, is made in our gut. Um, and so if we don't have that good stress-reduced atmosphere for digestion, mm -hmm. you know, we're setting ourselves up for head-to-toe possible. So when we talk about stress, that's mm -hmm. a pretty broad paintbrush. It Could is. you narrow it a little bit and also address how do you help people identify? Because it is such a layered thing. I mean, they probably, uh, I'm going to make the assumption since you are in the business you're in and you work with naturopaths and the, and the like, that they are more aware than, say, somebody else who is not taking this path for their health, right. but still identifying stress and what it, how it affects them sometimes surprises people. Absolutely. I, I, I think a lot of people do not realize the stress that they are under and they may say, oh yeah, you know, I have a high stress job or, you know, high stress this or that, but they don't equate that to, I am high stress right now my environment is making my body high stress. Um, so yes, people may be aware that some element in their life is very stressful, but that doesn't always um, translate into how that stress is affecting their body in a way other than, you know, maybe dreading going to work or something like that. Um, so the way that I often ask people sort of identify their stress is not even to ask them to identify their stress it's to the next time they sit down take five deep belly breaths over the course of several minutes put themselves back in that parasympathetic state that rest and digest state and see what difference it makes over the course of that meal and the course of the day after that meal what you know, what difference in your symptoms have you noticed? What symptoms did you notice you were having that you didn't even notice before? Um, so it's, it's often asking them to, to change their environment to see what the reaction is. And oftentimes people come back to me after that exercise and they say, you know, wow, I had no idea the effect that these things were having on, on the simplest things as digestion. So they may have had gas and bloating and constipation after a meal in a you know, very high stress environment. And then you ask them to take that step back in those deep belly breaths in that time. And all of a the sudden their digestion works much better and they don't have that gas and bloating you know, or diarrhea or whatever it is. Um, so the effects can be quite immediate. For I think that that can sometimes be that, um, revelation that says I need to change more about my life than just the food that I'm eating but how I eat it. So some of these symptoms, the simple symptoms that if somebody's listening to this mm -hmm. and they're thinking well I don't know if I have stress and why is it 
is it creating a bloating? Is that why I feel? What are some of the simple symptoms they might watch for with their stress and their digestion before calling you? Yeah, so it's often, and they're going to be very vague, just like, you know, symptoms of the flu or the cold, or they can be, you know, caused by nearly anything. But it's going to be fatigue, a bloating, even acid reflux, um, early satiety, or feeling full really quickly after eating. Um, you know, clothes that just don't seem to fit the same at the end of the day as they do at the beginning of the day. Um, and then you have the major digestive symptoms, nausea, vomiting, constipation, yeah. Um, a lot of these things can even take the form of sinus issues. So you'll have the phlegm in your throat, extra mucus or, or snot in your nose, um, a headache. All of those things can be symptoms of stress and also, and I think maybe more importantly, food allergy sensitivity intolerance. Um, which can cause a stress state in a person. So it's sort of this cyclical symptom cause sort of association. So there are days they feel better and they don't think about it, and then there's days they don't feel good and they wonder why, but they don't really attend to it. Yeah. Yeah. So and that and is I, where your expertise comes in. That's that's right. Um, that's where we do a lot of exercises that that trial and error that we spoke about before where changing little things can sort of help us pinpoint where that stress is coming from um, or if it's stress if it's an intolerance or allergy um, yeah all of those things come from from sort of the trials that we do and, and looking back on their food diaries those are a huge component of of my nutrition so the differences in symptoms between, say, the stress-related symptoms and the intolerance of things, is there something that they would notice? Is it are the symptoms similar or will they go, oh, I, I, I don't think I could eat cabbage anymore or is this my stress? Is that something that they would know or so they might. Um, I think it would depend on how intuitive of a person they are. Um, it really sort of depends on, you know, if they're, if they're really paying attention to how they're eating and what they're eating already, then they might be able to say, well, I think, you know, it's every time I eat maybe this sort of food that I don't feel well, or maybe there's a consistency where they don't feel well, like every day for seven days I don't feel well. Um, where there's that up and down pattern that might be stress, but they can't identify the stressor. So yeah, I, I think the symptoms overlap so much that most people would not recognize the gotcha. difference. But then again, some people are very intuitive. So something that doesn't come up very often, but is also based in, can, or can be based in the, because the gut runs everything, right? So yes. the stresses, the, the inconsistencies in diet, can you speak to sleep patterns around that? Yes, so it sort of runs both ways. Sleep can influence how we eat and digest, and definitely how we eat and digest can affect how we sleep. And so there again, that often becomes this cyclical pattern where we're not eating well, we're not sleeping well, then we're not eating well because we're not sleeping well. Um, <laughs> so it's- It just goes around and around. <laughs> exactly, so figuring out, I mean, and sometimes you can't figure out what caused which first, it's the chicken or the egg situation. Um, so then you just identify strategies to change one, see how that you know, affects the other and vice versa. Um, and then you sort of put those strategies together and figure out, you know, which of what, which ones of these strategies are going to be sort of sustainable and let's figure out which ones have the most impact and then we can sort of take the other ones away and see where we're left symptom wise and energy sleep wise. Um, so again, trial and error. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Well, and that's excellent because it, that's a, that's a process people understand also. You know, once you get to a point where you're at your wit's end over something and you are 
done or you're just cooked, so to speak, on the medical jargon that you can't filter through and retain. Sometimes it's just the simplicity yeah. of coming in and having somebody like yourself, the detective, figure it <laughs> out and say, we're going to try this. Yeah. Right? Yes. I, I think that's a huge, a huge point that you just made. Um, people get so frustrated with the jargon that they don't understand. Maybe jargon that they do understand, but they've been told the same thing by 10 different people, or they've been told 10 different things by 10 different people. Um, to have someone come to you and say, you know, let me know what's going on in your life and I am going to be that person who filters for you. Um, that, I think, can take as much stress off of a person to right. make a change in and of itself. Yeah. Um, so at least for that short term, you know, sometimes going to see someone, um, I think people have the same reaction to counseling or therapy where just being able to tell someone what is going on makes yeah. the biggest difference. Um, and then to have someone say, well, let's come up with some strategies together. And then we can analyze those strategies together. And you're not in this alone anymore, I think makes a world. It, you know, the, the, there is a place absolutely for the, the other side of the medical community but the jargon the descriptions the you know the they may describe something to the patient that they're talking to but it's just so beyond them yeah it's fearful and stressful yeah. so this is an offering that you have for people that can simplify what it is that they need to hear yeah and understand that's really lovely that does take a lot of stress off people it can and i i always feel fabulous when i'm able to say you know put this on me i understand that medical side of it you know i went through two years of internship in hospitals in outpatient facilities you know in counseling centers i understand both sides of it and i've been a patient myself a lot so i can take those things and say you know, yeah. this is what they're actually talking about. Do you want to talk about that more? Do you want to talk about the anatomy and physiology? Or do you just want to talk about that? We can do both. We can talk about the why and the how and all of that. Or we can just get down to the what can you do. Um, I like to offer both of those. Well, and having perused your website, you have quite a background of personal experience. If you could briefly talk to that because that makes it a calming effect somebody knows that they can trust what you're saying because you've been there yeah um and and that's one of the reasons i like to be so open at, you know as you mentioned i have like an about me section on my website um and i like to share with people that i've been there i have you know several autoimmune chronic illnesses crohn's being first and foremost among those that affects my life you know most impactful way um, that I started experiencing symptoms at the young age, about 10, and it took me a decade to get a diagnosis. So I've been at that frustrating point where uh, you feel so horrible uh, to the point where you're, you know, dreaming about cures and, you know, you know, graphic as of cutting your stomach open is, you know, and, taking out the pain. Um, so I get that. I've, I've been in that awful bottom of the barrel under a rock situation. Um, and I can understand that. And I can also understand coming out the other side of it with a diagnosis, uh, treatment options, and an alternative lifestyle that I created for myself during those 10 years where I was struggling and no one in the Western medicine community could tell me what was going on. Um, so that's really how I got my start in dietetics, was coming up with these lifestyle and diet plans for myself to help reduce the symptoms until someone could tell me, you know, what's really going on in there because I had no idea. And, uh, but figuring things out for myself led me to research and um, led me to drawing up plans and, 
and sort of understanding all of that medical jargon from a patient perspective and then going into school and understanding it. Um, so that's sort of where my personal and professional come together. <laughs> and that's excellent. I mean, it, it, it helps people to feel comfortable knowing that you will understand when they say, well, I constantly have a pain here, but nobody can tell me what it's about. Right. So, you know, you became a detective for your own health and you can help people unravel what's holding them in pain. That's, that's fabulous. Thank you. I would, I'd like to um, touch on just a smidge on your website, you talk about you have a couple of partners. Yes. We, we don't have to go into a huge detail, but it's part of your gig. So, yeah, let's speak to it. Perfect. Um, so, I work with two wonderful ladies, uh, Lily Isaacson, who is an acupuncturist and herbal medicine practitioner. Um, I also work with this wonderful woman named, uh, sorry, Amy Bader. She is a massage therapist. She also does craniosacral therapy, energy work, and Reiki. Um, so together we sort of help manage patients. Um, and you know, if you see one of us, you don't have to see the others. Um, but if you want to, we can collaborate, work together. Um, you know, if I can't help you enough with lifestyle and nutrition, then we can go to the more manual which, you know, they're wonderful practitioners. I encourage anyone, their information is on my website if they want to check them out. Mm -hmm. Do you treat younger people also? Do you look at beings that you were one of them at one time? Mm -hmm. and, you know, that is that part of your whole... Yeah, so I will see anyone from infant to end of life. Um, I will see people who, you know, have chronic illness from a very young age, um, you know, childhood overweight and obesity is becoming quite the epidemic. So I see, you know, school age children a lot. I also see teens who are into sports and fitness or just general, you know, nutrition to make sure that they're fit. Um, and then I see people all the way, you know, people through pre-menopause and menopause. Um, I've done quite a bit of that as well. So there's a whole gamut. I see pretty much anyone. And if it's something that I don't think that I can treat, um, that's what those pre-appointment emails are for. Or even if we discover it during the first appointment, um, I'm totally fine. We can switch gears. We can switch dietitians. I'd like to ask if you could tell people how you came to the name you did with your business. It's quite unique. Sure. So Kokua uh, in the Kokua Lifestyle and Nutrition is a Hawaiian word um, and it traditionally means health. Um, but when I was living in Hawaii, how I came to know it was sort of a helping hand or a boost. Um, and so I decided to use the name Kokua after having worked at the disability services office at the University of Hawaii, um, and they call their disability services office uh, Kokua. So it is sort of meant in the same sense um, that they meant it as just someone here to help guide you, um, just a boost um, to help you figure out what's going on and help you feel better and just you know, sort of be there as, as that friend who can sort of boost you up. So it's a very deeply placed thing in your heart. Yes. That is lovely. Okay, so I think we've really hit the nail on the head. We've covered a lot in a short amount of time, but I want to ask, mm -hmm. is there something that you've thought about that you want to speak to that I have not brought to the forefront? Please. Uh, I just, I guess, want to advocate on the part of dietitians for a second. Um, we do a lot more than uh, what people traditionally would think of as like a food police. Um, there is no, there's no judgment in our offices. There's never a judgment. Um, we like to work with what people like. Um, and so that, unless you have an allergy, that means no food is off limits. Um, and, and you can come see a dietitian for nearly anything 
have, you know, just questions about diets that you've seen advertised on TV. If you have questions about the is coffee good for you or is coffee bad for you debate that seems to go on for years and years, um, you can ask those type of questions as well. So it's, you know, it ranges from, from people with chronic illness, you know, like myself with Crohn's disease or anyone with general nutrition questions. I love to dispel myths. I love to give, you know, quick strategies. That's, that's what I'm here for. So dietitians are for anyone. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> Well, on that note, then, I know you are, uh, as I'm looking through my notes, you have covered everything quite thoroughly. Yay. So <laughs> you're probably a very busy person, and I should uh, just say I so appreciate you coming on and telling everybody what you do, who you are, where you are. It's been very enlightening. Thank you so much for having me. I always, I love to talk about this. It really is my passion. So thank you. And it shows. You, you. you wear it well. Thank you. Hey, everybody. If you have enjoyed this video and you've seen some of the others, Please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel for future interviews that are coming up and learn more about the local practitioners you live around and with here in Snohomish. Thanks.